Well, it's so good to have this opportunity to share with you this morning. I want to think about life change and about how God changes lives because of Jesus and because of what he's done. We're also thinking that because of what Jesus has done in Jason's life. Uh, We've got a big pool of water uh, for those of you that came in at the front and thinking where, you know, what, what's going on. But there is a, a big pool of water there on the screen right now. But today I want to, to, to go through or to reflect on some of those readings we've had. But also to uh, think about Romans 6. Romans 6 is a passage uh, that Paul wrote uh, where he was reflecting on the, the death and resurrection of Jesus. And so it's... Uh, It's a passage that I want to to look at and think about and then introduce you to a a new character who's helped me to reflect on Easter. Uh, So this is is, uh, words from Paul who himself had his life totally changed around, his life completely changed. Uh, So this is how it goes. It says, are you aware that all of us who were baptised into Christ Jesus were baptised into his death. Therefore, we were buried with him by baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too may walk in a new way of life. That's a great description of why we do baptism. It's why we do baptism. We We die with Jesus as we go down into the water, We die with Jesus and then we rise to a a new way of life, a new way of living. Not the same way. You know, when we meet Jesus, we don't stay the same. It's a change. We have new patterns, new patterns of thought, new purpose. Uh, All of this because of what Jesus has done. Verse 5, for if we are joined with him in the likeness of his death, we will certainly also be in the likeness of his resurrection. The certainty is so good, isn't it? The certainty. We will certainly be there. Yeah, we will certainly have that new life, that likeness of his resurrection. We can be certain because of what Jesus has done. For we know, verse 6, that our old life was crucified with him in order that sin's dominion over the body may be abolished so that we may no longer be enslaved to sin. Yeah, the new life that comes from Jesus, his death and resurrection, means we're free from sin's bondage. So often it can feel that sin has bondage over us, has, you know, it keeps us as his slave or its slave, and we feel like we have to do those bad things, those wrong things. But Jesus can break that. Since a person who has died is freed from sin's claims. Sin has no claim over us. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. Yeah, we will live in a new life, new way of living because of Jesus. Verse 9, because we know that Christ, having been raised from the dead, will not die again. Death no longer rules over him. How good to know that Jesus is alive today and alive forevermore and nothing can control him because Jesus is the one who changes lives. Jesus is the one who's always changed lives, whether it's whether it's Mary Magdalene, someone who was uh, bound with, with evil spirits and changed life, whether it was Zacchaeus, someone who was selfish and greedy, changed life, whether it was people who were born blind or lame, changed lives, whether it was to Saul, as I've already mentioned, who changed his life, became Paul and the leader in the church, to the Ethiopian eunuch who, yeah, had an understanding of God, but he wasn't accepted by Jews because he wasn't enough, he wasn't fully, you know, everything, but God loved him and changed his life, changed his life. There was Cornelius, an outsider, who was outside of the Jewish way. He was outside of things. He was, how can he be accepted? But God came and changed 
his life. There was Lydia, whose life was changed. All these people in the Bible, but thinking, you know, uh, John Newton, a slave trader, whose life was changed. Yeah, whose life was changed because of his faith in Jesus. Uh, C.S. Lewis, I'm sure many of you have read his books or watched the films and things. Yeah, an atheist whose life was changed. People whose lives were changed. Marcus Hudson, he grew up in Los Angeles, surrounded by gang violence and drug addiction. He met Jesus. His life was changed. Sarah Young, a successful lawyer, battled anxiety and loneliness. But her life was changed. Who here has had their life changed because of their faith in Jesus? Put up your hand if you've had life, your life changed because you've had... You know, that's the reality, isn't it? Yeah, okay, thank you. Put your hands down. But it's, it's crazy, isn't it? As we just see all those people whose lives have been changed, not just through history, not just through recent history, but now Jesus is still changing lives. And I think I want to introduce you now to my new favourite character. Came sort of born out of Romans 6. Uh, and, uh, and you can see, anyone got a think what his name might be? God, Charlie. <laughs> Sorry? T-Face. This is, this is my new favourite character, uh, Mr. T-Face. Or Mrs. T-Face, or Ms. T-Face, or uh, T-Face. Just T-Face, I uh, think, because... Uh, his face is in the shape of a T. Uh, so he's called T-Face. It's good, isn't it, so far? Right, so, but it helps me to remember. Oh, sometimes these things help, help me to remember, and hopefully it'll help you to remember, and it, it gives us a bit of encouragement. The T, we're going to go through those five letters. The T is about truth. Yeah, because as it says in, in Romans 6, and as Jesus said, and as the, the two people dressed in white at the tomb said, have you not heard? Jesus said he was going to die. He said he was going to be raised on the third day. So, so why are you looking here? Why are you looking here? Because he, he, he said he was going to raise, and we can trust him. We can trust him because he is someone that, yeah, we, we can always trust. We can always trust. We can always say, yeah, you are a, a promise keeper. You're someone who, uh, you know, who will always do what he says. Flick it on, Chris. Let's see what that first T is. Uh, yeah, Jesus was someone who didn't stay in the grave. He didn't stay there because he said he wouldn't. And so he did it. It's so true, isn't it? When we look at politicians or we look at, you know, leaders of during the COVID stuff and things. And we think, yeah, they said all these things, but then they did something that wasn't like what they said. And then we stop trusting them. You know, if I told you something all the time and then it just, you know, I, I use an example with a, with a school once. I said, uh, imagine that my arm is made of gold. You know, and I'm telling you that my arm is made of gold. And you would all go, wow, wow. Well, you probably wouldn't. But, you know, the children were like, wow, is it really? Is it really made of gold? And I was like, well, I, well you'll have to wait and find out and see when I cut myself. Or somewhere, I don't know, for some reason my arm's cut. And you can see whether my arm is made of gold. And then at some stage you'll realise that my arm's not made of gold. And you'll think, can we trust anything that Simon says. And you think, well, that's a bit of a bizarre thing, isn't it, to say that your, your arm's made of gold. But Jesus, I think, made a more powerful comment. I'm going to die and be raised to life. Yeah? Not just a part of his body, but I'm going to die and be raised to life so we can trust him. We can trust him because his promises will always come true. 
his death and resurrection brings us freedom. It brings us freedom because we can be set free from sin. We can be set free from the power of sin. When Jesus died and rose again, he said, I forgive you. And that forgiveness was, was free. We don't have to pay for it. Jesus paid for it and gives it to us free. That forgiveness is full. It's everything. It's not, well, I know Jesus has forgiven me for lots of things, but I'm sure he can't forgive me this. No, Jesus' forgiveness is full. It's everything. And it's final. It's final. His forgiveness is final. So it's not, well, I'm sure he's forgiven me until this bit, but then he won't. No, his forgiveness is free. It's full. It's final. So we can be set free from sin. Yeah, we can be set free from the power of sin. As we highlighted earlier, sin has no hold over us because nothing has hold over Jesus. Death and sin and the power of sin doesn't have a hold over Jesus because he beat death and he rose from the dead. And we can live in that life that, that Jesus gives to us, that changed life. And so there's no power of sin over us. We're free to be the people that God wants us to be. Yeah, you're free to be the person that God has designed you to be. Because of the resurrection, you can be set free. You can, you can go on that lifetime adventure of following Jesus, of living for Jesus because he's set us free. You can start to try and imagine what the next letter is now. So A, one can be right. So Jesus is alive. Simply that Jesus is alive. He's someone, he's alive because of the resurrection. It's a simple one, isn't it? But because of the resurrection, Jesus is still alive today and he's still changing lives. Yeah, Jesus is still changing lives. The power of Jesus, the spirit of Jesus is, is changing lives today. That's why when we, you know, when we put our hands up and things, there's so many people whose lives have been changed because Jesus is still alive. And the great thing is that because of Jesus' life, it's not that he just changes us when we become a Christian and then we, we go, oh yeah, God's changed me. But Jesus keeps changing us, keeps changing us. So we are more and more like him. We're more and more the people that he wants us to be. So let's get close to Jesus so that he can keep changing us because he is alive and powerful. Uh, we're thinking about changed lives and things, and that could be the seed, but I thought it could be also about the church. The church exists because of Jesus' resurrection. The church exists because it's a place for people to meet <laughs> whose lives have been changed. Yet the church is a group of people whose lives have been changed by Jesus. Yep, and the church exists because it has a message to tell. Yep, without resurrection, there's no message to tell. And the church wouldn't exist. But because of Jesus' resurrection, we have a message to tell. Yeah, the church exists. And, the, and finally, E. Uh, eternity. Eternity. Jesus is alive. Alive forever. And Jesus says, yeah, I want to change your life. Not just change your life so it's better now although it can be, but I want to change your life so you're fit for eternity. Fit for an eternity living with God. That is wonderful, isn't it? That his resurrection gives us hope, gives us a future, not just for now, but forever. So that's my friend, uh, Mr. T-Face. 
It will help some of you to remember. <laughs> but it's just want to finish with this challenge, really. Do you know <laughs> T-Face? Do you know T-Face in your life? Can you be someone that says, yeah, I trust Jesus. I trust what he says. I trust what he says. I trust who he is. Are you someone that says, yeah, I, 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 I want that freedom. I, I, I want to I wanna be in a relationship with, with Jesus because he's alive. And I want him to change my life. And I want to be part of, of other people. And I want to have that message to tell others. And, and I want it because it will last forever, for eternity. Jason's got a tea face. He's going to tell us about his tea face in a moment. <laughs> uh, If you're thinking, yeah, there's something I would love to investigate more. I'd love to find out more. I would love to, well, why is Jason getting baptized? Why aren't I getting baptized as well? Don't leave here without speaking to us, speaking to me or Paul, or, or, you know, because we would love to talk more and encourage you to find out about the God who loves you, Jesus who loves you, Jesus who can set you free. This Resurrection Sunday, Jesus wants to change your life. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are a life changer. Thank you that you are alive today. And as we come before you, if we offer ourselves before you, you lovingly accept us, welcome us, hold us, and say, yes, you are mine. You are forgiven. You are set free. You are loved. You are chosen. You're adopted. You're mine Jesus thank you that you are a life changer and as we sit here or at home at the moment we say Lord change my life I come before you and invite you Lord to change my life Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your eternal love for us. Amen.